Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, no, I can't hear that. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Right, pull up a chair. Hello, hello. Hello and welcome back to my channel. How are we all this afternoon? Oh, now the computer's starting to pump emails through, like seriously, timing guys. How are we? Who's watching? Hey there, Emma. Hey, Annalise, how are you? How's everybody's afternoon going? Hey, Mel, Sarah. Oh, I've got a few little watch cup girls coming in. So, welcome, welcome. Um, I hope you all enjoyed this morning's live Facebook. Um, for those of you... For those of you who didn't catch it, this is what we did. I sticked it all down and stuck it all down, is correct wordings, and added some of the Vicky Booten um, words, wordy words, and added a few of the stickers and popped some glossy accents on, glued everything down, used some foam tape to stick on my butterfly, and I love that. So. If you missed this morning's live, you can jump back on and have a look at any time and I will upload them to YouTube next week. So this afternoon, I'm going to do some cool things with modelling paste, stencils and lindies. Um, due to popular demand, I'll be doing two layouts, one vintage, one bright. Um, and this here... This is what I use with my leftover materials from the last class. So this is, I just got a paintbrush and just painted them on my, on a page in my Dina Wakeley journal, which already had some stenciling on it where I cleared off my, well, I cleaned off a palette previously. So there you go. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> mm. Goodness me. Sorry about that, guys. Furball. <laughs> Furball. That's it. So, what are we going to do today? We are going to play with Lindy's stamps, Lindy's products. We're going to play with a few stamps and a few stencils. Um, so, today only being Saturday, the 1st of May. It's May month, guys. Um, 1st of May, we are, have 15% off across the shop for Lindy's products, stamps and stencils, excluding um, your fabulous ones. my fabulous ones and paper, paper artsy. So what I wanna do is we're gonna play with Lindy's sprays today. So Lindy's sprays are awesome. Everyone knows how much I love Lindy's sprays. And I'm gonna give you the edited, quick edited version about the Lindy's sprays. There are three sorts of sprays that Lindy's have. They have, not that one. Oh, I haven't even got one here. Okay, we'll come back to that one. We'll just pretend that that's what it is. Um, so there are other moon shadow mist. So a moon shadow mist is a, a walnut or a sepia colored liquid with a colored shimmer. So you can see that shimmer sitting in the bottom. These are the original ones that they bought out and they are awesome. So they are more your vintage style. Then we have the Starburst sprays. So Starburst sprays are the coloured liquid with the coloured shimmer. So same, same. And then there are the flat Fabios, the flat colours, which I just don't have here. Um, and the flat colours are flat pigment spray with no shimmer in them. So they're super easy to use. When you receive them in the post, you get them in an empty container. You get them, this one is just the powder that sits in the bottom to about there. Um, it has instructions on the side here. Add water, sorry. Add warm water to the fill line. Let sit for 10 minutes, shake before each use and enjoy. So what I do here in Adelaide, um, Adelaide water is, is known for being awful. I boil filtered tap water 
in the jug. Excuse the dust. Um, and I fill it up. So let me show you how to do that. So when you get these in the post and you freak out because you're like, oh my God, it's empty. Yeah, it is. They do that for a couple of reasons. They do that for uh, transport. So they're lighter to transport and so that they don't leak in transport. So what I do before anything is I give it a tap and release all the powder off the bottom, undo the cap and pop that aside. Take my warm, not, not boiling, but warm filtered tap water and activate it to the fill line, filling it up almost to the top, but not totally. Okay, pop it in like that, pop your lid back on and then give it a shake. And it's like jelly crystals, you've got to dissolve it all. But you, it's not advisable to use, it's not advisable to use cold water because it, like I said, jelly crystals aren't going to dissolve in cold water, are they? So backwards and forwards, you give it a good shake, let it sit for 10 minutes, shake before each use and everybody's happy. This colour is called Time Travel Teal. So I'm going to pop that aside and we can use that later. So what I thought we might do is I thought we might do a little simple, three simple background. I was going to do a full scrapbook layout, but since you all want me, half of you want me to do a vintage page, the other half of you want me to do a bright. Sorry, I'm going to cough again, guys. Hang on. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, half of you want me to do a bright. What I thought I might do is show you a couple of tricks first that you can do with stencils and lindies, and then I will do both a, um, a bright and a vintage page. You out of here, Lou? I'm out. Knocking off for the day? All right, I will see Happy you. Happy crafting, people. Thanks, Lou. I will speak to you. I'll pack your orders tomorrow, girl. There you go. Louise is on packing duty tomorrow. She's off to coach her netball girls. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, bye. Okay, so, sorry about that little interlude. What I want to show you is something really awesome that you can do with modelling paste um, and Lindy's. Because Lindy's is a pigment dye-based powder, the pigment means it's full of colour. The dye means it's got a permanency to it. The powder need, means you need to activate it. So I could activate it with anything. So if I make up a little pile here of inexpensive Montmartre modeling paste, nothing fancy. I don't need to buy, oh God, it's everywhere. I don't need to buy fancy modeling paste. I can make my own colored modeling paste. Uh, it's everywhere today. All right, and so and now I can choose the colour. So this is autumn maple crimson, which is a gorgeous burgundy. Um, how did I get it up there? What the heck? Oh, anyone would think I've never done this before. And now I can just make up my own modelling paste in whatever colour I like. So now I can choose how how dense this is going to be. So if it's not the right colour red, let's make it the right colour red. All right, so I'm just mixing it all together. Oh, let's make it a bit more. Let's commit to it, hey? Mixing, mixing, mixing. Oh, look at that. So this is a really cool technique that works great with all of the magical colors and stencils. So here's a bit of scrap cardstock. This is just an offcut of Kayser Crafts Smooth White cardstock and one of the Natalie May scrapbooking stencils. And now I'm just going to wipe it down and I've made my own texture paste in the colour that I want it to be. 
And I can hear my husband is just getting home from work. I can hear the exhaust in the car. There we go. All right, there we go. How good is that? You see that colour? Oh, it's not really showing up too much on camera, but there we go. So that's a really lovely deep burgundy sort of um, colour. It's, it's simple. Love that. All right, so I'm just going to pop this in some water. Give me just a sec. Give it a quick scrub. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to now use my sprays and I can, I can use my sprays in a couple of different ways. I can spray straight onto... Now my assistant's gone, hasn't she? Um, I can spray straight onto a piece of cardstock, which I will do that in just a second. Let me make a clean spot. Um, and I can stencil and spray. So I've actually prepared a couple of backgrounds, but I'm going to do a stencil and spray first. And then I'm going to have a play with um, like a um, crackle paste in the background and a couple of others. Uh, I'm just grabbing a stencil girl stencil from here somewhere. Oh, look, here we go. All right, actually, I know this one just came back into stock. As soon as I use a stencil, you guys all want it. So I need to make sure I have a stencil here that you all um, can, you, you can purchase if you want to, because they're 15% off. So what I've just put down in my background here is a puppy training pad. I love this with sprays because it protects my area. The cardstock that I'm using here is marshmallow cardstock. So it is a heavier weight cardstock, slightly heavier than what I would normally use, which is just a, a plain flat one. I like this heavier one because it works really, really nicely for mixed media purposes. Um, what I want to do is I'm going to use the one of the Let's use Moonlit Mulberry Moon Shadow Spray and Phantom Fuchsia with a little peg leg purple. So I'm just going to keep it in this corner, all right? I'm going to go right almost edge to edge there. Give them a good shake backwards and forwards first. Mine are almost empty, so I'm kind of hoping that this is all going to go to plan. And when you are spraying something like this, if I was to spray just straight, give it one quick squirt, it would do this, right? Or some sprays quite often just will go, oh, no, that one works. Some of them just go in like a round circle. You know exactly what I mean. But what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have got some movement. So the best way to spray is a movement like that. So this one is Peg Leg Peat Purple. So it's a really light spray and it's gonna dry with a purple shimmer. And I'm going to mix it with some Phantom Fuchsia and some Moonlit Mulberry. So here's the good colors sitting in the bottom here. In fact, I'm just gonna go with this one. Backwards and forwards shaking. Like that. And then I'm going to lift, oops, and there we go. We've got that gorgeous print and I can, I'm going to take that and I'm going to flip it and I'm going to transfer it over onto here. I'm going to stamp with it. Just like that. All right. So, What's happened, you can't really tell um, until it's dry, but it has a really 
light pinky shimmer to it. So I'm going to pop that aside to dry for 10 minutes rather than getting the heat gun out. And I'm going to clean off my stencil. Uh, the way that I clean off my stencil is I usually just roll my paper towel over the top of it uh, just because I'm lazy. Um, what are you women talking about there? Oh, how funny. Okay. Sorry, I'm just catching up on the comments. So that's a Stencil Girl stencil. That one is 15% off this weekend. Okay, what, I want, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use some modelling paste and I'm going to show you how to use modelling paste with a stencil. I know everybody already knows, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, except, of course, I walked away. I just used the piece of cardstock that I'd put aside. All right, so if I want to use, let's find one of my new stencils, hey? Dun, dun, dun. I'm going to use this one. So this is my Artie Alphas. Uh, the way that I like to use this with modelling paste is with my Catalyst tool. This is my favourite tool for um, using. And the reason being, I didn't clean it last time properly. And it's got gel medium dried on it, which is excellent because it just peels right off because it's silicon. Love that. All right. Um, I'm gonna, just going to go down one side with the words. When I stencil, I like to make sure that I want more of an organic look. I don't want straight edges. That bores me to tears. So I will go usually all in the same motion. I try and connect it off the top of the page as well. And I'm not going edge to edge, all right, because I don't want to have a perfectly straight line on the edge. So I'm going to peel that up now. So modelling paste or texture paste is designed to dry with body. So I'm putting it on like thick peanut butter. So I'm connecting it down the bottom. Now up the top here, because this is wet still, I'm going to not drop that down onto there, but I'm gonna push it up to that, that line right there, okay? A little bit more paste. And I'm keeping all of my strokes kind of vertical so that I have some sort of connection Voila! And I'm pretty happy with that. So when you bring it up to camera, you can see that it's got that, um, it's got that body to it. Okay, looks pretty cool. Where can I put that to dry? All right, so you do need to dry this or clean this off straight away or it's going to ruin your stencil. So the way that I do it is I just pop it in the bottom of my um, my little studio sink here and use one of those cheap and nasty Ikea um, kitchen scrubbing brushy things that we like to use um, and uh, for, like for the dishes and just scrub it over the top. So, all right, and I've just noticed again how crooked my camera is. Okay, so let's make some layouts. My... Previously, I uh, between oh, after my last Facebook, <laughs> um, I did a couple of backgrounds. So this is again on the marshmallow cardstock, and this is using my new organic circle stencil, and you can see that um, loose look. The other one that I did is this one. So this one is using. An Art by Marlene stencil, which is this one, which is number 17. Um, and I mixed, a, mixed some modelling paste, just normal modelling paste, texture paste, with texture paste opaque crackle. So can you see that crackle? I'm pretty sure that that crackle is showing up on camera. And you can see how chunky 
and the dimension that I have got with this. It's got a totally different texture that I absolutely love. I um, put it outside in the sun. It's about 28 degrees here in Adelaide today. Um, absolutely lovely. Um, and I put it out in the sun to dry rather than heat setting it and it, it came up looking really nice. So I'm gonna do this in the vintage style and I'm going to do this one in the brights. Okay, let's look at our brights. Before I do anything, as per normal, I need to swatch. I need to know what I'm working with. Um, or maybe I'll use this one. Should I just do a purple layout? Purple? What's the vote? Purple and time travel teal. Or... Okay, I'll do purple with this one when it dries, okay? If I stop talking long enough. Okay, so this here is the Outer Space collection that has most recently been released from Lindy's. And I want to use that one, so I need to swatch it first so I know, uh, I know what I'm doing, what colours I'm working with. So I'm just going to swatch them on a bit of paper towel. Here's all the goodness sitting in the bottom. Shake. And always swatch first to make sure that your nozzles are working great. So this one is called Alien Goo Green. Yeah, always check that your, your nozzles are working great. If anyone saw the live Facebook I did using the Dina Wakely gloss sprays, that I hadn't cleaned the nozzles first, it was a shit hot mess of a nightmare. Louise still gives me so much trouble about that. She just thinks that's the funniest thing she's ever seen. Um, I've got these coming in in singles on the way. Oh, see, that one's a bit dodgy on the spraying, but there we go. Got that one working. Um, but these are, they're much better value in a set, okay? So, um, all right, great. Those colours look really, really cool. But I have to remember, mixing that colour with that colour is going to make mud, all right? Mixing that colour and that colour together isn't going to be as pretty. So I just need to have a little bit more awareness when I am spraying for obvious reasons so I don't make mud. All right, enough talking. Let's just do it. I'm going to go, I'm going to start off with just a little yellow. And I'm just going to go lightly in. The cool thing about working with marshmallow cardstock is that it... It's made for mixed media, okay? So it's made to hold these colours, okay? And I'm just lightly moving that around. You can see that, just letting it pull. This one is the Galactic Teal. So as I'm hesitating, it's kind of splattering a bit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to... I'm going to... I'm going to forget the purple. The purple is going to muddy it up too much. I'm not going to put them all on the page together. I'm having a moment. And I'm going to get my heat gun out and I'm going to dry as I go. And I'm going to layer. Layer upon layer upon layer. Oh my God, I was so, I'm so much funnier in real life, guys, honestly. <laughs> um, while I'm drying this, um, I hope you're all part of the Natalie May creative community, uh, the Facebook group, because I'm thinking tonight when the football's on, if I'm not too knackered, exhausted, I might pop over there and do a impromptu live Facebook. I might, uh, no promises. It's been a lot in the last couple of days doing, and I've got another day tomorrow of live Facebooks. So I'm gonna see how I feel. But I'm thinking I might go in and do a little, a little live Facebook. Yeah, okay, here we go. We're starting to make lovely layers across here. I like it. I like it, I like it, I like it. And when I lift it up in a minute, once I get rid of the drips, you're going to see that shimmer and how it's pulling really, really nicely in and around 
my stenciling. So the modeling paste I used, not expensive. It's, it's a, um, a Montmartre texture paste. It does the job for what it is. If I was to use a light modeling paste, which is another one that people use all the time, um, I find that it's more absorbent. This one is more of a, this one kind of takes the color and the color sits on top of it. But the light modeling paste, which I know in my store, for example, online, I've got about three or four different brands. Whoops. Liquitex do one, Prima do one, Montmartre do one. They're quite porous. They're like buttercream icing. They, um, they work really, really great. All right, so now we have got that stunning shimmer and it is looking really, really pretty. Can you see that shimmer? Is it coming up on camera? Yeah, right, it is. So I'm gonna pop that aside, but that's a great base for a scrapbook page. Um, I'm gonna pop that aside and do my other one and then I can come back because just letting it sit and settle and dry I can just come back to it and see if it needs some stamping, for example. All right, so this is the one with the modeling paste. Let's have a look at these sprays that I have here. I have got Tawny Turquoise. Oh, I've got two of Tawny Turquoise. I've got Treasure Island Aqua. So you can see the good stuff sitting in the bottom there. All right, so let's just stop fluffing around and get into it. I'm gonna saturate this page, okay? I'm gonna really, really saturate this page. Get into it. Down, down, spray, spray, spray. All the way across. Now I'm gonna add, so that one was Treasure Island Aqua, so now I'm gonna add Tawny Turquoise. From, mem from memory, Tawny Turquoise has a slightly different, oh, here we go. It has a darker coloured liquid. Oh, that was hard to say, wasn't it? Sorry, guys. Um, but the shimmer is slightly different. All right, so I'm just going to let that drip down. Oh, that's so pretty. And I'm just going to grab my water, just normal, regular Adelaide water to help the flow, get the drip. Flood out that bottom. In fact, I'm going to get my modelling paste so my layout stands up on edge to help that drip. Okay. Right, love it. Now, because this has got a, I need something else to get that corner to sit up. Here's my water container, that'll work. Oh, because my, because the two colors that I've chosen have got a, like a blue green tone to them, I can get a bit daring and add a little bit of a teal splatter. Maybe I'll do that. Shall I just give it a whirl? How bad can it go, right? So instead of spraying it through the nozzle, I'm going to tap. Oh, just tap it, smoker's tap. And then I'm going to go back over with my moon shadow spray because I don't want it to be blue. I want it to stay brown. But what's happening is that colour is dripping in between the cracks and the shimmer. It's, it's totally changing how it looks. So I'll do that again, a little splatter, and it's still wet, okay? So working with it while it's wet is helping it happen. So it's emphasizing the shimmer in the moon shadow spray and making it work. So down here, I've got a hot mess, but I'm going to drip it back up this way. Oh, I 
wish this shimmer would show up beautifully on camera. It's just... Right, where I've got these waves on here, I can get rid of those by just using a little mist of water. Oh, I haven't done this in ages. I miss doing this. This is so much fun. Okay, you can see how that's gone out to one colour now. One vintage colour that you all requested. Most of you requested. But because Lindy's is a stain, it stained the paper and I love that. Let's just, what's this colour here? Silhouette silver. Nah, I want tawny turquoise. And I can build and build and build and build and build. And build and build and build. Okay, what do we think so far? Are you just going, oh, she's failing at that. It's a hot mess. Give me some feedback. You've all gone quiet. You're either freaking out or going to make a coffee and you've got bored and gone away. What's what's it going to be, guys? Doable or not? So just that most of this blue that you can see was actually in the moon shadow sprays, okay? What I did with that um, other colour that I just flicked on was just just intensify it just a just a smidgen i honestly didn't add enough to make a difference okay so it's something that there we go almost dry you see that so all of that shimmer is in the moon shadow sprays with just a, a very small addition from that that those flicks of blue all right, you can see that. And like seriously, Tim Holtz Crackle Opaque Paste is just the best. All right, let me make a clean spot. Let me make a clean spot. So what else can you do with Lindy's sprays? What can't you do with Lindy's sprays? Um, you can do everything with Lindy's sprays. You can colour flowers. You can colour chipboard with Lindy's sprays. You can colour um, the dog. You can colour anything you want with Lindy's sprays. It's totally up to you. You can dip your paintbrush into them and use them like watercolours. But they have a permanency to them that you just don't get from other products. And that's what I love. All right, so I'm going to pop that aside to air dry just a little. And now I'm going to come back to this one that I did before so I can dry it quickly and then show you this awesome purple. So um, we, we forget about how easy it is to use sprays on our backgrounds. Um, I really love doing this. I haven't done it in ages and I'm super guilty as charged. Just going to quickly dry it. So when you're drying, um, just a bit of a tip when you are drying modelling paste or anything on a, a page like this, it's always a really handy tip to put your heat gun underneath and dry it from the other side as well. It's wet on the other side. It's wet all the way through. So to speed up the drying process, move your heat gun around. Don't do that. That does nothing. It just spreads the air out more you are much better moving it very very small um slowly like i said earlier today it's not going to burst into tea into into flames just it's not going to burn your paper if you're watching it yeah that that tim holtz crackle paste there's a couple of different ones that i've got online he's got a grit paste an opaque grit paste and a translucent transparent Grit paste. I th I haven't opened one of those lately. I think that they would be pretty damn amazing. But I think that the crackle or anything that's going to hold a different texture is just going to look fantastic. Okay, sweet violet purple teal. Let me tell you about this little gem. I love it. 
So here's the good stuff. Can you see that? Like seriously good. Now the cardstock that I'm working on this time is just normal Kaiser card. Cheap, nasty, thin. I've got thicker toilet paper, not ideal, but I wanna show you how to use it like this. Um, I've just got that down there. I'm actually gonna turn it sideways and I'm going to get it on there. And I'm just coming down and spraying it and giving it some direction to drip. Um, out of all of the Lindy's colours and considering how much you know I dislike purple, this colour does the most for me. I love this colour. I think I love the blue shimmer. I love that these colours are so harmonious together. They work so very well together. Oh, okay. Um, are you catching little glimpses of that purple, of that, sorry, that blue shimmer? If I dry that off, it'll start to appear. Now, I'm not adding any extra colours. I'm just going to leave it just like it is, okay? I'm, I'm so tempted to add the blue, but I'll do this first. And then I will show you what it looks like with just the slightest addition. Actually, no, I'm not because it doesn't need it now that it's drying. Hello, Susie Borman. I see you. How are you, princess? Are you going to bring me some morning tea tomorrow? Leave me a parcel of awesomeness like you do for, for the last show? Is that, is that a thing? Am I, am I feeling lucky? Am I pushing my luck? Am I joking? 100%. Okay. Can you see that? I don't even need to move that. And you can see that shimmer that is just come out of one colour. Oh, that makes me all sorts of happy. All sorts of happy, like seriously, one colour. Sweet violet purple teal. Um, to enhance that, I could add some of that time travel teal. You haven't got an oven or a kitchen at the moment. Oh shit, really? Wow, you can come and use mine and cook. No, just joking. Um, so yeah, I could do anything here. So how about I continue by adding, I'm going to stencil with it, but instead of doing it, I'm going to use my stencil as a stamp. So how do I do that? I spray my stencil. Contrasting color. Oh, sorry, not contrasting, harmonious color. Oh, all the feels. Look at that. Yes. Bit of water. <laughs> Happy days. I'm like a two-year-old. Seriously. Can you hear me? My God. Sorry, guys. I'm not like this normally, but, you know, yeah, I am. Who am I kidding? Um, okay, so adding in that pop of teal has enhanced what was in the spray. Okay, so when we bring it up to camera, using my stencil as a stamp, to create that really weird sort of background going on there is a win. 
All right, can I leave it alone? Hell no. Absolutely not. But that's okay. Now I'm gonna put that aside to dry and I'm gonna come back to that very first layout that I did. Oh, that's dried up a treat. Okay, what can I do here? What can I do? What can I do? Um, I don't really have any embellishments or anything. I cut these ones up yesterday. These are some of the Art by Marlene dies, die cuts. I cut some up yesterday and never used them. So how about I add three of those across here and I'm going to spray them in... Um, in that purple, in that colour, in that colour. Thanks for the information, Natalie. And I'm just going to do, do it on a piece of paper towel, just so that you can see it on a clean background. Um, okay, so this paper that I used is uh, the, I think, Dina Wakely cotton paper, the single sheets that she, or the Ranger Tim Holtz one, I'm not sure. It's a little soft, it's like a cotton rag paper. And this is Martian Magenta, that is from the Outer Space set. All right, so now working on an embellishment, we're just gonna go I may have oversprayed the heck out of that, but you know what? That's fine. Let's commit to it. Oop, that's going to be hot, isn't it? Just do them all at the same time on both sides. Dry them, dry them. Lay out here. <laughs> Happy days. Okay. Stick a photo in the middle. Couple of splatters of purple. Bob's your uncle. If you're not from Australia and you just heard me say Bob's your uncle, Bob's not my uncle. Okay. It's just a bad, bad slang. It's just pretty funny. Um, so that works. Instant layout. What's going on here? Oh, okay. Can you see that? So this is the first one that I did where I just sprayed with the stencil. And can you see those glimpses of that purple shimmer? Hang on a minute. Oh, yeah, you can see a little. There we go. You can see it up, down, okay? So that is the shimmer that sits within those sprays, okay? So they look pretty fantastic. So that is using the Moonlit Mulberry and the Peg Leg Purple and what was the other one that I used? Phantom Fuchsia. So they can look pretty great as well. So if what would I do with this page? Couple of things I could do with this page. I'd cut it, um, cut, cut it down to a little bit smaller, um, mat it on a piece of black, um, or if I matted it on purple, this would this purple shimmer would stand out even more. Um, so many very very cool things I could stick my photo in it, frame my photo with some Tim Holtz papers, um, edge it with distress inks add some Tim Holtz embellishments, get that beautiful antique feel going to it. Exactly the same thing with this one. Now this is actually still, because I use a thick marshmallow paper, it has gone through, but I totally saturated that. You saw how much I saturated that. I added water, I added the whole thing. But can you see how it's, it's grabbed in those cracks, in the crackle? I could just look at that all day. That floats my boat. Um, with this one, I'd do exactly the same thing. I would trim it down to say 11 by 11, mount it on a piece of black or even 
like an aqua cardstock. Um, my photo would go here where I have got my join for my stencils. And I'd keep it super simple because this is all about my, it's everything's about the photograph. Oh, look at that. My modeling, my crackle crackled right off. It was a little thick there, I'm thinking. Um, so there you go. That would certainly work as well. But the Lindy sprays are ideal for this. Absolutely ideal for these sorts of backgrounds. Um, then this guy has dried up nicely. I love that. I really like that. So exactly the same thing. I would add my photograph about here and then get in there with um, maybe a couple of um, embellishments in the side, a nice big fat title, um, black doodle outline on here. If I get around to it, maybe maybe this is what I might do tonight is I might finish these layouts out live on my uh, in my Facebook group. What do you think about that? That's a good idea. I think I might do that instead. Um, okay, so I reckon I've probably covered just about everything I need to today about the sprays. Um, so just in recapping, we did a couple of different things. We used a Stencil Girl stencil on marshmallow cardstock. So it's not normal cardstock. It's the really, really nice cardstock um, available online as well. The stencils today are 15% off. So they are going to be, yeah, they'll automatically be discounted in your cart. Um, the gave it a spray with three different colored colors in the moon shadow sprays, uh, moonlit mulberry, peg leg purple, moonlit mulberry, and phantom fuchsia. So there they are there. So we sprayed and then I stamped with it, which I love that as well. Uh, what else did we do? Oh, the very first thing we did was we made our own colored modeling paste out of one of the Lindy's Magicals. Okay, so that's pretty great. That's come up really nicely. We did that. We used we used Alien Goo Green, UFO Yellow, Outer Space Aqua, and Galactic Teal, which are from a whole set of Lindy's, which also includes uh, Martian Magenta. Look at those colours. We used those. We sprayed our background, which I had pre-stenciled. Um, these are the dyes from Art by Marlene. I just gave those a quick squirt as well. Okay. Um, we used a... Oops, here we go. This is an Art by Marlene stencil, which is this one here. Number 17. And then I sprayed it with... Dun, dun, dun. Treasure Island Aqua and Tawny Turquoise with a few little splatters of time travel teal. So you get that gorgeous, gorgeous background. And then we flooded the bottom of our cardstock. And because we use marshmallow cardstock, it held up to the water. And that's really important. You don't want to do this technique on a thin, wispy bit of paper. It's not going to work great at all. And the very last thing we did is we used one color down the middle, which is sweet violet purple teal. And then I did some stencil stamping with time travel teal. So there you go, guys. So today you can get 15% off of Lindy's. So all of these products that I've shown you, with the exception of the modeling paste, um, all 15% off. Love that. Stamps and stencils are also 15% off today as well. No judgment postage, which means that you don't need to pay postage twice. You can pay it just at one time. And then any second order, third order, fifth order, seventh order, um, you just select no judgment at the checkout and it becomes only $1, sorry, one cent extra to post those over. Um, and to put, we put all your orders together, I should say. 
So there you go. Um, private Facebook group, Natalie May Scrapbooking Creative Community. I'm going to come back and hopefully tonight. There's no promises on that. I'm going to see how the rest of my day pans out. But I'm going to do some sprinkle and spritz backgrounds with the Magicals back here at 4.30 Adelaide time, which is in two hours. So thanks, guys. Um, it has been a pleasure as always. And I look forward to seeing you really, really soon. See ya.